Hello and welcome. This is James at the DSO Imager Channel. And tonight I'm going to talk about RC Astro's latest release, Blur Exterminator. Now, Russell uh, Croman over at RC Astro has put out a lot of very useful tools for us astrophotographers. Uh, he's the one behind the original Gradient Exterminator that came out years ago and uh, does some amazing things with gradients on Photoshop. Uh, recently he had come out with um, Noise Exterminator and also Star Exterminator. Now I have videos on uh, my channel uh, with a first look at Star Exterminator and Noise Exterminator and uh, both have continued to be improved uh, since their initial release. And so yet again we have a new tool from uh, Russell uh, that is really gonna it's a game changer quite frankly and I'm I'm seriously not overselling this either. Uh, it um, it's basically deconvolution. Uh, it uh, and it's a lot easier and much faster than running deconvolution uh, the regular way in PixInsight. Now this program is only available in PixInsight um, but if you uh, if that's what you're using and you've seen my video on deconvolution or you've tried working with deconvolution uh, you know uh, how tricky it can be to get uh, deconvolution right. Now I'm not going to go into a whole lot of details about how it works and how to use it. Uh, this is this video's intended purpose is really just to give a first look and to give some examples. Uh, documentation is available. Uh, in case you didn't know, you can actually like click this little button here for browse documentation, and that opens it up right here and from here you can export it to a PDF and so that's what I've done and here it is it's not that long of a read it is a great read though and anyone that uh, that uh, wants to use this I totally encourage you to uh, read through the whole thing before um, uh, trying it out uh, because unlike the uh, previous programs like Star Exterminator and Noise Exterminator this one you've got to run it in, while the data is still linear just like deconvolution uh, so you, you can't take this uh, and apply it to a finished image uh, but anyway a couple shout outs here I mean look at it's it's not just I mean it's deconvolution but there is also um, it's also going to work to try and improve the roundness of the stars which is I think a big, a, a really big deal for a lot of us. And so anyway, uh, like I said, great, uh, great documentation on how to use it. Explains what everything does, and uh, has some tips at the bottom as well. All right, so let's look at some data. Now I've got a few examples here, and. Um, I tried to get examples of different types of configuration. So in this example, uh, this is a Cygnus wall. It's a very short, uh, especially for me, a short amount of uh, exposure, just over three hours. And I use the uh, AT115 EDT with an ASI 533MC. So we have a triplet refractor, medium size, with uh, one shot color. I also have a shot narrow band image with the uh, 70 milli millimeter refractor and I've got a couple examples with the um, Celestron Edge so it should give you a good idea of how it um, how it works with different uh, configurations. Uh, one other thing I'll point out it works really well with a lot of signal so a really short exposure especially on a dim target uh, it's not going to work that great uh, but if you've got uh, a decent amount of exposure, especially at longer focal lengths, uh, it's going to do a, a really amazing job. Now, this being only three hours, I think is pretty typical of, um, of what a lot of people are able to shoot with limited time available. And fortunately, the Cygnus wall is a bright target. And I think this is a, a good example of what you can expect with this type of scenario. Okay, so like I said, three hours. This is stacked. This is straight out of stack. This is uh, uh, we're using the STS uh, STF auto stretch to kind of get an idea of what's there, 
hasn't been stretched yet. Uh, and as far as preparatory work, uh, before you would apply Blur Exterminator, uh, you can see I cropped it, which is normal. That's to get rid of stacking artifacts on the edges. Uh, then you're going to want to want to do color calibration, and so I just set the standard background neutralization and then color calibration, and uh, that's what we ended up with. And then I just made a, a copy of this, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit here uh, so you can see the impact. Because right after I did did the color calibration, I applied the um, blur exterminator. And by the way, this data isn't the greatest. At the time I took this picture, this is a picture I took a long time ago, I had some tilt in the image train, and you can see the stars are not looking very round at all. I think this was even too much for uh, for the current version of Blur Exterminator to, to help. But uh, there we go. So huge difference in the star sizes. I mean, so concentrate here and also concentrate here on this part of the cloud here this nebula and it's a significant difference now star exterminator does take some time to run but you know you when I run deconvolution that takes a long time to run too and I'd say uh, I'm saying star exterminator blur exterminator uh, runs quicker than uh, doing deconvolution and of course there's no having to manually click on stars to do a dynamic PSF you're not having to mess around with um, with uh, filters you know the star mask or the um, or the uh, range mask and yeah I mean this just did a really fabulous job with it in one shot and then after that I removed the stars and uh, then I just did a bunch of curves work and then, of course, if you're familiar with uh, my workflow videos, I do the standard work with curves or, and range masks and whatnot. And here's the final image. So, I mean, not bad for three hours of exposure. One shot color camera on a good target. And I think this did a really nice job of, um, of uh, demonstrating what... Uh, Blur Exterminator can do very quickly. I mean, I, I spent I spent less than an hour processing this image from scratch today, just before putting together this video. And so, of course, every time uh, Russell releases new software, I find myself reprocessing old data all over again. And nothing's <laughs> nothing's different this time around. So I started going through some of the old data that I have. Um, this is M74. You know, I was never totally um, uh, satisfied with how this one came out. I went ahead and pushed it out anyway. But um, I always felt it was a bit blurry. And so I have not finished reprocessing this, pre this one, but uh, I wanted to show this here. So here's a close-up of M74, right? Uh, it's not stretched. I just... Uh, I used the auto stretch and then dialed it back so we can see some of these details. And uh, this is with uh, Blur Exterminator. I mean, <laughs> look at that. Look look at all this detail in, in the dust lanes now. So, pretty significant here. Now, the tool does have some sliders and um, pull it up here. So you do have to be careful. There is a preview button here. Uh, now be warned when you open up a preview and make a change it's like applying the whole process and it does take a while. Uh, one thing you could do is maybe you know just, just do a small box as a preview to kind of give you an idea and you can uh, adjust these different sliders and they're three different choices for uh, for the, the process, which way to do it. And uh, Russell's documentation does a good job of explaining each step. Uh, I have found that on some of my galaxies it was better to, to use this version. But I play around with it. The results are just amazing. 
All right, so now let's look at an example using a short field refractor. This is um, my Stellarview SV70T, so 336 millimeter focal length with its reducer. The camera is an ASI 1600 mono. The filter is used. This is back when I had a mix of filters. So I've got um, a 5 nanometer Astrodon and two 6 nanometer uh, astronomic filters for O3 and S2. And I don't remember exactly how many hours in here. I think it's about 20 hours of total exposure. Rosette, of course, is a very nice bright target. Uh, you know what? I think it's like 13 hours. This was less than, than my typical capture. I had captured this last year and actually wasn't happy with, with uh, my processing results. And so this is another example of data that I just kind of put on my shelf. And um, uh, I thought uh, when I got my hands on Blur Exterminator, I thought this would be a great, great image to uh, work on and see what I could do. So to get to this point, all I did uh, was literally crop to get rid of uh, stacking artifacts, uh, then combine them with the uh, LRGB combination tool. And uh, this is linear. This is the output from the LRGB combination tool. And then I run Blur Exterminator. So I'm doing Blur Exterminator even before dynamic background extraction. Uh, what, I've, what I've been doing so far, and subject to change, um, is uh, I do uh, the channel combination, color calibration if it's uh, relevant. Um, I think with this I did background neutralization, but, but no color calibration. And um, then you do the uh, uh, Blur Exterminator and uh, then I remove the stars and then I run dynamic background extraction because dynamic background extraction uh, is much easier to run without the stars in the way. You don't have to worry about uh, the sample size. You can do a really large sample size and without the stars in there you can have a better idea of where the gradient's at and what's background and what isn't. Uh, so anyway, let's uh, take a look. Uh, so here are the bright stars in the middle, and that's with um, Blur Exterminator. So yeah, tremendous job here. And uh, let's take a look at all of these here. All right, so look at look at the dark nebula in here. Really does a great job on this dust. It's it's pr pretty amazing. I mean, again, I I would have had to spend an enormous amount of time tweaking and tweaking um, with um, uh, deconvolution the manual way, and I feel like I had gotten pretty decent at deconvolution over the past couple of years. But I mean, <laughs> I I will I this this is better than what I was able to do. And I mean, here's the final image right here. So pretty happy with the way this one turned out. Uh, at the end of this video, I'll run a, a short sequence of all the pictures so you can get a good look at them at, at full resolution. All right, let's take a look at one more. So I want to get a picture uh, taken from the edge. now. This is really technically an incomplete image. Uh, so obviously it's a tadpoles using this Lestron 8-inch uh, Edge HD with uh, ASI 294 mono. Filters on this are astronomic 6 nanometer hydrogen, sulfur, and oxygen. And I'm actually still collecting data on this target. So this isn't finished, uh, a finished image. But I just wanted to see how things were going, especially since... Uh, I was not too thrilled with how the O3, so this O3 that I captured uh, was during not very good conditions, poor seeing conditions, uh, probably a little windy, and, and you know, the, the longer focal length scopes are more sensitive to poor seeing conditions. And so I figured I was going to have to reshoot most of this uh, blue anyway, because these stars are so bloated. But I thought this would be a good test for a blur exterminator. 
Uh, and just real quick, here's the S2. And uh, here's the HA. The HA looks pretty decent. I mean, <laughs> the stars look a little blurry uh, now, but... And we're getting some good details on the tadpoles. All right, so again, uh, just like I explained with the previous image, right? I did a channel combination, and this is what we have. And let's take a close look now. And that's what Blur Exterminator did. So again, a nice job on those stars. And uh, I think it actually helped uh, with the um, with the bloated stars I was getting from O3. All right, and uh, let's just take a quick look at the final image of this incomplete data collection. <laughs> so here we go. Again, this was a pretty quick process. It was mostly to see how uh, Blur Exterminator would impact uh, the overall processing, and I'd say it really helped a lot. We zoom in here. I mean, you can see it tamed those bad O3 stars pretty well. Got some nice details in the dust and in the nebula. And uh, yeah, the uh, tadpoles are looking really good. So anyway, more to come on this particular image. Uh, I'd like to go pretty deep on it, see how far I can go, and of course replace most of that bad O3 data. Uh, so look forward to a uh, workflow video on this when it's finished. So uh, that's pretty much it. I just wanted to kind of demo uh, what Blur Exterminator is all about. I definitely think it's worth it. Now I do have an affiliate link uh, in the comments. And if you were to click on that and end up uh, purchasing uh, any of the RC Astro products, I would get a little uh, commission. Uh, so just disclosing that. But... I mean, they're totally worth the price. I mean, you can see the how the impact that they're having on the images, and uh, the whole the whole suite of RC Astro products uh, I use in my workflow. It's uh, it's really come a long way, and it's really amazing what's available to us today as uh, amateurs. So with that, uh, I leave you. Have a good day and clear skies.